Did Ryan Garcia actually cheat? Breaking news came out last Wednesday that Ryan Garcia tested positive for a SARM called Osterine from a test conducted on the day of the fight. At the time of the announcement, that was only the A sample, meaning Ryan Garcia, within 10 days of that announcement, could request testing of a B sample, or essentially the second sample he sent in to either confirm or deny the Osterine found in the A sample. And as I'm recording this, it has been confirmed that Ryan Garcia has started the process of testing his B sample, so we have to just wait and see. And as I'm editing this, Ryan Garcia just got cleared of one banned substance, keyword there being one. Though, we're of course going to get into both the banned substances that showed up in his VADA test, and we're going to talk about the implications of both. And more breaking news as I continue to edit, it was announced by Victor Conti, a man who I will get into later in this video, that Ryan Garcia tested positive for Austrian 60 times above the allowable limit. It also should be noted that if the New York State Athletic Commission does find that Ryan Garcia willingly cheated, then Devin Haney's loss to Ryan Garcia would be officially changed to a no contest, and Devin Haney would technically and officially be undefeated. So with a lot of information coming out recently, and seemingly a lot of conflicting information coming out recently, it seems like the internet doesn't really understand what's going on. So in today's video, I'm going to try to compile as many facts, or at least the information that we know, and let you guys decide whether or not Ryan Garcia willingly cheated or not. Let's of course get into the actual results of the drug test. VADA, the Voluntary Anti-Doping Association, the relatively long-time drug testing organization for boxing announced on Saturday that both a test on April 19th, the day before the fight, and April 20th, the day of the fight, tested Ryan Garcia positive for Osterine, and though not confirmed, he also screened a positive for 19 norandrosterone. But like I mentioned before, as I was editing, Ryan Garcia was confirmed to not have 19 norandrosterone in his body. However, we're still going to go through each of the banned substances. So let's start with Osterine. Osterine is a SARM, or a Selective Androgen Receptor Modulator, or in layman's terms, unlike a traditional steroid, it can target specific areas you want to trigger without affecting other areas negatively. Osterine, in this case, aids in building muscle mass, reducing fat, increases stamina, and improves recovery. It also should be noted that Osterine is not produced endogenously, meaning Osterine is completely synthetic or unnatural to the body, meaning it's pretty clear that someone took something foreign if they test positive for it. Also in that report, it has been speculated that a one billionth of a gram of Osterine was found in Ryan Garcia's system. However, as we now know, Osterine isn't produced in the body naturally, so any amount in Ryan Garcia's system means that he took something foreign. But again, because of such a minuscule amount, one could argue that this was a result of tainted supplements rather than intentional intake for performance enhancement. Of course, that was recorded before Victor Conti came out with this information that Ryan Garcia actually tested positive for 60 times above the legal limit instead of the billionth gram that was previously reported. Though unlike Osterine, 19 norandrosterone is a metabolite or a leftover substance formed from the breaking down of nandrolone, which is an anabolic steroid. Though 19 norandrosterone can be produced naturally by humans. So if this were to be confirmed in this positive drug test, we have to see how much of that metabolite was found to deduce if that amount came from an anabolic steroid or was naturally produced. And of course, this was recorded before this story came out. So Ryan has been cleared of 19 randrosterone, but it's nice to learn something new every day. But unfortunately, this situation isn't as black and white as a positive or negative drug test. Because of boxing's infamous corruption problems, the possibility of tainted supplements, and also some of the underlying motives that we may not see, there is still a pretty good possibility that a positive drug test isn't the end-all be-all. So let's start out with some of the explanations or maybe conspiracy theories on Ryan's side. Ryan first brings up the timeline of the ordeal to his defense. On an Instagram story, Ryan brings up the receipts of his four negative VADA tests leading up to the fight. The first one being on February 26th, the next one being on March 8th, the next being on March 15th, and the last being on April 3rd. This means that if Ryan did willingly cheat, it would have been within two weeks of the actual fight, which according to the legend himself, Derek from More Place, More Dates, seems to be skeptical. Would Ryan be intentionally taking something with an Osterine product for performance enhancement right on like the day of his fight, essentially, or right before it? Why would he be doing that at an amount that is likely completely 
impossible to impart a performance enhancing advantage. If anything, it's just unnecessary risk if you were to intentionally take this compound right before your fight. And no person in his camp, I would imagine, would be stupid enough to advise him to take it as the compound of choice, knowing the detectability, like SARMs are not endogenously produced. Basically, all fighters know that drug organizations like VADA, WADA, or USADA often, if not every single time, test fighters on the day of their fight. So taking something so detectable, so close to the fight, willingly, would seem like a very stupid move from Ryan Garcia. I want to quickly clear something up as well. Ryan claims that he couldn't have cheated because if this positive test happened a day before the fight, then why did the fight go on? What can I say, you know, uh, why didn't they come out with this before, you know, the fight, if they found it before, why would they let me step into the ring right. as a cheater and then come out with the victory and then they post this, you know? Though it's true the test was conducted on the day before and the day of the fight, often the test results usually don't come out until days or weeks later. We've seen this situation unfold during John Jones and DC's second fight where the results of a test from the weigh-ins of that fight wasn't announced until a month after. And in that case, John Jones tested positive for the PED to rent a ball. And so a day after, the California State Athletic Commission overruled this a no contest. The reasonable theories I've heard online was that Ryan leading up to this fight was taking dietary supplements and because Osterine aids in fat loss while helping in muscle retention, Ryan Garcia may have taken Osterine to try to make weight. Though, of course, Ryan has claimed, Let's say I did take Osterine, right? I would have made weight then. <laughs> Because it makes you lose weight. If he willingly took Osterine, then he should have made weight, which would point to tainted supplements. But this is just Ryan's words. It's equally likely that he wanted every advantage he could get by willingly taking Osterine on top of being three pounds overweight. I mean, he did bet $2 million on this fight and got paid out 10, and this was easily the biggest moment of his career so far, so there's definitely a great incentive from Ryan to do everything in his power to come with all advantages. And speaking of tainted supplements and more of Ryan's claims, Ryan continues to claim that he popped hot in that drug test because of a tainted supplement of ashwagandha. Of course, the brand Ryan points to has since denied having any Osterine in their ashwagandha, and I haven't seen anyone call for this, but if it's really the ashwagandha how about we test the actual bottle then the bottle says it contains 120 capsules so this could very well be the bottle ryan used leading up to the fight with devin haney so why don't we test that actual bottle and try to find the osterine the knee-jerk reaction for all athletes when they pop is to claim tainted supplements, and at this point, fans see it as a boy cried wolf situation. However, there are actual instances where athletes were telling the truth. One such famous instance is Yoel Romero, because back in 2016, Yoel Romero tested positive for the PED Ibutamorin and was suspended by USADA for six months. Then fast forward to 2019, Yoel Romero wins a whopping $27 million in a lawsuit against Gold Star Performance Products products when an investigation found the supplements you all took were indeed tainted. So again, if Ryan can just hold on to that ashwagandha bottle or whatever he thinks is tainted and can get an investigation going on, he could very well be telling the truth about not willingly taking Osterine. Another claim Ryan has made was that Victor Conte, a man that is well connected to Devin Haney, is behind the positive test result. In the past few days, I would imagine you've heard the name Victor Conte a lot. Conte, in short, is a big-time sports nutritionist, currently working closely with big-time boxers with his brand Snack, with one of those boxers being Devin Haney. But before all of this, Victor Conte was behind one of, if not the biggest PED scandal in American sports history. Balco, or the Bay Area Laboratory Cooperative, was a sports nutritional supplier created by Victor Conte that provided athletes at the time undetectable PEDs like EPO, HGH, testosterone, and other designer steroids, all hidden under the guise of sports supplements. Famous athletes tied to the Balco scandal include Olympic track star Marion Jones, NFL linebacker Bill Romanowski, and most famously, MLB star Barry Bonds. For his involvement, Victor Conti served four months in prison, and when he got out, he got right back into the game, later founding Snack, or the Scientific Nutrition for Advanced Conditioning, and has made claims that he helped found VADA, which VADA has since denied, and later Victor Conti backtracked saying he only provided consultation. 
Now with Victor Conti's involvement, Ryan has suggested that because he is somebody who has been a part of scandals in the past and is possibly connected to VADA and has a close relationship with Devin Haney, Victor Conti may be the one responsible for the positive test result. Of course, Victor Conti has since denied these claims on TMZ and slightly unrelated has also confirmed on Twitter that Ryan has requested for his B sample to be tested and the results may take two to four weeks and up to six. So that's everything we know so far. We really have to wait on the B sample test results to really pin down whether or not Ryan Garcia truly had Austrian and 19 Naranda Rosterone in his body. And even after a positive test result, that's probably not gonna be the end of the situation as an investigation will soon follow to see whether or not Ryan Garcia willingly took those PEDs. But until then, again, that is all the facts and I just wanted to remind you, excuse me, that this story is far from over. But anyways, what do you guys think about this situation? Do you think Ryan Garcia really cheated or not? Is this a whole conspiracy with Victor Conte and another, you know, drug testing scandal? Let me know your guys' thoughts in the, just in the comments below, not the description, the comments below. And I'll see you in the next one. Peace.